Hey, you're about to watch a video which has a bunch of answers to questions in it about my book Just Stab Me Now. In the time since I shot that video, I have enabled global distribution on Ingram Spark, which means that pre-orders are available in some places. If you go and check your favourite place and think pre-orders are not available here, they take up to eight weeks to show up, and I have no control over that. If you are American, for example, you can pre-order this on barnesandnoble.com. The, the book is now a Barnes & Noble bestseller. It's been up like two days. Guys, what? I, I've just decided to find all of the amazing things that happened to me extremely funny because otherwise they would be so overwhelming that I would sit in a corner and just... Anyway, if you're in the US, Barnes & Noble do have my paperback up for pre-order, Amazon US do not, but you can order the ebook there. Global ebook distribution is still coming, it has not gone up yet, so if you're looking for the book on Apple Books or Google Play, that is coming but it's not here yet. If you are in Australia and the only place you can find the book it costs $54, no, it should cost about 30. Like my RRP for it is $27.99 Australian, so bear that in mind. <laughs> Bear that in mind. Am I going to go around for the next week introducing myself to my friends as Barnes & Noble best-selling author Jill Bearup? Absolutely 100% I am. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Publishing this book has been the most ridiculous experience I have ever had. Like some weird things have happened to me in my life, but this one takes the cake, guys. Anyway, you had other questions which were about the spice level of the book and where I got the title from. There was also a question about translation and I have since find out that you are supposed to sell translation rights, you're not supposed to get someone to do it yourself necessarily. But anyway, you'll see. You can tell me about translation of books because I don't know anything, as is very, very obvious. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video. It does get a little unhinged. I mean, Barnes & Noble best-selling book. It's been up for two days. Um, it's already unhinged, but even more so. Have a good time. We did FAQs in a video last week, and the short version of these is that the paperback and ebook are coming out on the 5th of February, the audiobook is coming out narrated by me at a point later than the 5th of February, I don't know when yet, and the hardback is coming out at some point, I haven't really decided anything. And at the end of that short I said, do you have any other questions? Now I was expecting questions about the book, I was expecting questions about videos, I was even expecting questions about cheese, because that's basically a meme at this point. I was not expecting some of the others. This isn't even all of them and we may have to do a part two at some point, but uh, before we get into it, this episode is sponsored by me and things that you can buy from me. This is the classic Just Stab Me Now hoodie, but I did just get a new one, so. That is looking quite nice, if I do say so myself. We'll get some more of the stuff out as we go along, but let's get going. Where did you get the idea for the title? So Just Stab Me Now in this font here is the lowest tier of my armor rating system. I don't know how I came up with the name, but I do remember roughly when, because it was a couple of weeks before my first armor tier list went up, but I never really expected it to capture people's imaginations the way that it did. To this day, things with Just Stab Me Now on them remain the best-selling items in my merch shop. And of course, I now have versions which in the style of the book font, as in this one here, as well as the list font, so we'll see which one's more popular. But since I already had people associating this phrase with me, and since there's a lot of stabbing and assassination attempts and other kinds of random violence in the novel, I thought, why not just call it that? It was originally called One Crisis at a Time, which was basically how I was approaching the publishing process, and kind of still am, but funnily enough, it got changed to Just Stab Me Now right around the point where the publishing process started to get really, really stressful. So, um, there's that too. Basically my thinking though was Jill Bearup says things about stabbing, has a novel which is named after that thing about stabbing. Which countries will this book be available in? Currently the ebook, which is free of DRM, is available via Amazon in the following stores. Amazon US, Amazon UK, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, the Netherlands, Japan, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, Australia, and India. Paperback will be available from Amazon from all of those previously mentioned places, plus Sweden and Poland. What if I hate Amazon? Okay, calm down, there are alternatives. I am publishing on Amazon with KDP, but I am also publishing wide, as it is known, via Ingram Spark. So the ebook should be available on the Google Play Store and Apple Books and allegedly all of these places. Honestly though, I don't know, we are going to find out together. The paperback is also being published via KDP and Ingram Spark, so if you have a local bookshop, you should just be able to go to them and say, hi, I would like to order in this book, here's the name, here's the ISBN, 
can you do the thing? They should, should be able to do that. Even the Australian bookshops, and shout out to the shop in Australia which now has a sword because of me. I apologise for nothing. If you are thinking this is the most chaotic book launch in the history of ever, then you are absolutely right. I offer no apologies for that either. I'm one person who has hired four contractors, so to speak, and I have no idea what I'm doing. The whole point was, though, that you saw the shorts and you wanted the book, so I wrote the book, and then you wanted the ebook, so there's going to be an ebook, and you also wanted a paperback, so there's going to be a paperback as well. And you wanted a hardcover, and we're working on that, and you wanted an audiobook, and there is going to be one of those as well. So you're getting all the things you want, just chaotically. As for other places, someone asked me if the novel will be available on TikTok, and I don't actually know what that means, so if you do know what that means, could you please explain in the comments? Thank you very much. Okay, we have a bunch of audiobook questions, but before that, stickers. This is the Sword Lady Books logo, pink version. I ordered this a while back and I stuck it on my laptop and I thought, eh, I don't know. I mean, I like it, but maybe the white, matte or glossy would be better, so I've ordered both. Let's see how they do. Okay, we have matte and we have glossy, and you can't tell the difference, but I can. Having now stuck all three of them on, it is obvious that I was correct, and the transparent one is significantly washed out compared to the white, matte, or glossy. Can't tell you whether I prefer the matte or glossy. Probably the matte, but, you know, I, I am happy with either of those. If you want to be more subtle, then you want the transparent one. Just gonna go for that. Am I going to leave all three of these stickers on my laptop? Possibly. All right, audiobook questions. Will the audiobook be on Audible? I certainly hope so. Will the audiobook be available places other than Audible? Uh, yes, I, I also hope so. I am currently trying to figure out if I can sell it as a digital product via Patreon. As in, it's not that you have to sign up to a Patreon subscription to get it, you can just pay the money for it on Patreon, like Patreon is a shop. That seems to be a thing they're offering. I'm going to work that out when I actually have the finished thing to sell. Will the audiobook be on Storytel? I don't even know what that is. How do you write so fast? Tell me your secret! Uh, well, you see, my actual honest answer to that would be don't enjoy writing very much, which means that you really want to get it finished, and so you write as fast as possible. Also, I went to visit my in-laws over the Christmas period last year, and that meant that I didn't have to do any cooking or very much childcare at all for a period of like a week and a half and it was amazing and so I just wrote. Before and after that I would get up about five o'clock in the morning so I could write for a couple of hours before everybody else got up and then I would take a nap in the afternoon because I have chronic fatigue and eight hours of sleep is not an amount of sleep I can actually function on. Basically what I'm saying here is I have no useful advice. About 60% of the process was sort of neutral state, like I am writing, I need to keep writing, I'm going to keep writing, that's fine. About 20%, oh this is actually really funny and I really like that, no that's a very touching moment, this is going well, and about 20% I hate everything and I'm dragging the words from my brain one at a time with fish hooks, or possibly meat hooks. Basically what kept me going in that time was the fact that I had promised to write you a book and so I had to write you a book. And that words are finite. Eventually you have written down all of the words and so you don't need to write anymore. I really enjoy reading fiction, but as it turns out I do not enjoy writing fiction very much. I enjoy writing YouTube videos though, so I'm very glad that I'm going to be able to do more of that in 2024 than I was in 2023. Before we continue, last piece of merch that I have bought is a mug. So I have this one with the Sword Lady Books logo on it, so if you're left-handed you can show it to everyone else. Um, and if you're right-handed, you show it to yourself. But I also decided to get the Just Stab Me Now panoramic one. Should I have just gone for the Just Stab Me Now option where it's all on one side? I mean, maybe, but you know what? I like it. Moving on. Arcs, question mark. Uh, right, those. I don't really know what to do about those. If you're a patron or a channel member, then you will probably already have access to the finished formatted EPUB, so you already have the ARC, so to speak. Incidentally, if you do have the ARC and you would like to leave a review on Goodreads because you really liked the book and thought it was fantastic, then please feel free to do that. But as for sending ARCs to other people, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. See previous comments about chaotic book launch. If you have suggestions, or just if you can tell me what other people usually do, then uh, please leave that in a comment because I would like to know, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet and uh, <laughs> Are you working through a publisher? Are you working with a professional marketer? As you can probably tell from the chaos of the previous replies, no, I am working neither with a publisher nor with a professional marketer. Professionals know things and plan in advance. I watch YouTube videos about things, try to plan in advance, and then inevitably something goes a bit awry and so we just kind of scramble until all of the things on the checklist 
Amsterdam. How many pages? I mean, the typeset was 322 pages. There are 311 pages of story. What's the age rating? I don't know, because I don't really know how those work. I mean, genre, age category-wise, it's definitely not young adult, because young adult means you have teenage protagonists, and we do not have teenage protagonists. Everybody is a grown-up. However, while it has violence in it, it's not very detailed or graphic, and while a major plot point is the concept of the marital debt, I'm not your mother, Google it, nobody is engaging in adult behaviour on the page, so to speak. As far as I can tell from romance people of my acquaintance, it's either called clean, closed door, or fade to black. So you, you can pick. Someone asked me, will the book be suitable for a 12-year-old? I don't know. I mean, theoretically, it could be. It depends how sensitive your 12-year-old is, and how mature, and also their vocabulary, because we use a fair number of words. Not swear words, just big words that people might not know the meaning of. That said, various people have said that they are planning to gift it to late tweens or teenagers of their acquaintance, so make of that what you will. Are you planning on having the book translated into insert language here? Probably not. Let me explain why. For this book, I was in a hurry. I needed it to be of professional publication quality standard, and I needed it to be at that standard quickly, as in before people forgot all about the fantasy heroine series and how much they'd enjoyed it and how much they wanted a book. Trends are trends, and people forget things. So instead of spending time waiting for things, I spend money. Let me give you a quick and dirty guide, so to speak. I wrote a 55,000 word zero draft, mostly in the months of November and December 2022. In January, I gave it to my patrons and asked them for feedback, and got to work on polishing it, and also actually made YouTube videos. By March it was about 63,000 words, and I thought I should get a developmental editor, because I know this is still missing things, but I don't don't know what they are. So in the spring of 2023, uh, she looked at my draft and she gave me some feedback and I got to work on that again. The draft is now up to about 67 and a half thousand words. I decided that I was going to self-publish, I bought 10 ISBNs, and then I did a video where I said I need a line and copy editor and I also need a cover artist and at some point I will also need a typesetter. If you would like to apply for any of these, do the thing. I got 156 applications to be my editor. I sent out the manuscript and said, give me a sample edit. 78, that's a full 50% of those people, exactly 50% of those people, sent me back a sample edit. Something I would absolutely recommend if you feel like your self-esteem is a little bit too high. Of those people, I chose one. Her name is Stephanie Eagleson, and she started my line edit, which was extensive. It took her about six weeks, I think, to do the full line edit, and she would send me chunks as she was going on, and then it took me about another six weeks after she had finished to get it all done. By the end of August, when I had finished revisions, the manuscript was about eight 81,000 words, at which level it has roughly stayed. Over the summer I also hired a cover artist, his name is Scott Perry, you have seen his work already, it is beautiful. He's also a very patient person. I did not have a good summer, it was extremely stressful. Um, after two weeks of starting with one cover concept, I decided I needed to change to a completely different one, and then after we got going on that, I decided that it needed to sort of change again, but not in a major way. I mean, it looks very different, but the amount of extra work that had to be done was not large, thankfully. And it was the summer holidays, and so there was no school, and so there was very limited childcare, and it was it was not a good time. I did not have a good time. I was not okay. Anyway, looking over this 81,000 word manuscript, I said, Steph, this needs a round of copy editing, and she said, yes, I think you're probably right. So in September she did the copy editing, and then I made all of those changes, and in October I handed it over to my typesetter. My typesetter is Libris at Onsa Publishing. Onsa means leopard in Portuguese. I didn't know that until I had to look up how to pronounce it for this video. And I was like, oh, see, I knew there was a reason I liked you. Anyway, he is also fantastic. They, they were all wonderful. I handed over the copy edited manuscript to Libris, he typeset it, uh, and then I handed it to my proofreaders. So that's developmental editing, line editing, copy editing, cover, and typesetting. If I'd had a less complicated book, I might just have typeset it myself, but given that there was Caroline's World and Rosamond's World and scene dividers and text messages and manuscript comments, I was like, no, I cannot do this myself. It would just be horrendously stressful. Let's just pay a nice man to do it for us. So the typeset PDF of the paperback manuscript came back and it was looking beautiful, and so I handed it over to my proofreaders. Uh, my proofreaders were all volunteers, and they did it for a signed copy of the book, which obviously I haven't sent them yet because I don't have any yet, but that's eight author copies of the book plus eight lots of international shipping. So I proofread the whole thing, my proofreaders proofread the whole thing, I compiled all of those edits into one PDF, I sent it back to Libris, and he was like, right, here is the thing, and I said, okay, there is a typo right there, and also I asked you to change that one thing, please change it back, I actually don't like it. Great dude, Libris. Skilled, and professional, and efficient, 
What more could you ask for, really? I now had the PDF for the paperback, that meant I could put it on Amazon, and I could put it on Ingram Spark, and I could wait for their approval processes. Don't even talk to me. And then he also did the EPUB, which obviously is different because it has to be reflowable. And at some point he's also going to do the hardcover version, but I am not thinking about that right now because I have too many other things to think about. So altogether, all of these things came to about 10,000 US dollars. And yes, we're using dollars, because most of you are American statistically, and even if you're not, you understand roughly what a dollar is worth. Could I have got all of these things for significantly cheaper than $10,000? Oh yeah, absolutely. Would they have been as quick and as seamless and as professional? Maybe, maybe not. Ultimately, I think you either pay in money or you pay in time for these kinds of things. So this meant that I had to sell about 4,000 copies of my ebook, um, roughly, before I broke even. That doesn't count all of the ad revenue that I did not earn, like the opportunity cost of spending three months writing a book and not making any YouTube videos basically at all, uh, but we have now reached the level where I have made back all of the money that I spent. Well, I haven't got it yet, but there have been about 4,000 ebook pre-orders at this point, so the ebook was priced at 4.99, but uh, originally it was priced lower because I wanted people who were excited about buying the book to have some incentive to pre-order early, which is how we briefly ended up as the number one new release in the humorous fantasy category six months before the book came out and before it had a proper cover. We are now in the stage where I am theoretically earning back the money that I lost by not doing my actual job for several months. I think that we will make this back. I might even make an actual profit on this book, I don't know. I hope so. But I have no idea how it's gonna go. That was a lot and you've probably forgotten that the original question was about translation, so let me bring it back around to that. Translation is expensive. To have a translated book you need to translate the cover, so you need a new cover, uh, you need to translate all the words inside, obviously, and you need to re-typeset it, because obviously all the words are different now. Just to do the translation of the interior would probably be somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars, and that doesn't count the new cover or the new typesetting. Which means that you would need to be able to guarantee that you're going to sell at least five thousand, say, copies of the book in your target language. So let's say you have to spend $10,000 to translate something into a language. How do you get people who speak that language to buy it? Marketing. Now, I haven't spent basically any money on marketing because YouTube is my literal job. I already have a very large platform and a significantly sized audience, and in marketing terms, if you have watched the video to this point, you are either a warm prospect, as it were, or a hot prospect. Warm is like, oh, you know, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I might be interested in that. And hot is like, take my money, please. I do not have the ability to market my book in any language other than English, which means that if I wanted to market my book in any language other than English, I would have to pay for it, which would mean that you would have to spend more money, which means you would have to sell more copies in the target language before you could break even. Not make a profit, just break even. So no, I am not planning on translating my book into any other languages because it would be sincerely financially unviable at this point. But if the book sells like a million copies in English, come back and talk to me because I am sure there are other ways of doing this. I just don't know about them because I'm, it, it's just me. I'm just one person trying to publish a book, man. The next question rather speaks to this point. How excited slash relieved are you for the book release? Mostly at this point I'm having the kind of feeling that I had on the day that I got married. On my wedding day everyone said to me, oh you look, you know, your dress is beautiful, your hair looks lovely, whatever, but they also said you look so happy, you were just smiling all day, you just look so thrilled to be there. And I said, well, yes. I mean, first of all, it's like, I get to spend the rest of my life with the person I love most in the world, what's not to like about that? However, I was also happy because it was the day of the wedding. There was no more organization to be done. If something was gonna go wrong, it was no longer my problem. The relief of that was so incredible that I was also, I was doubly smiley. I have not enjoyed becoming an author, guys. I sometimes wonder to myself if we had gone the traditionally published route, if it would have been more or less stressful, and honestly, I don't think that we can make a judgement on that. I think it would have been less stressful in some ways and more stressful in others. The not having control of things would definitely have been simultaneously more stressful and less stressful. Because what if I hated the cover? Or what if I hated the marketing materials? Or what if they kept trying to sell it on how spicy it was when it is in fact not spicy at all? Anyway, on the topic of no longer having to organize things, with all the writing, editing, revising, publishing, have you been getting any sleep? Uh, yes, I have chronic fatigue, so I sleep like it's an Olympic sport. Follow on question, have you been taking good care of Jill other than just sleep? I have been doing my best. Like I said, it was not a very fun summer. I did not have a good time 
at all. But in October I kept telling myself if I can just get through to November everything will be much much easier and so it has proved because I still have the same number of projects. I still have moving house and finding a new school for my child and publishing a book and the audiobook and all that kind of thing. But there are much there are many fewer individual disparate tasks to be done for all of those things at the moment. And so that has been a great help. Will there be a sequel? I do not think so, because I do not want to do this again. I mean, I knew going into it that publishing a book was going to be a heck of a lot of work, but now I have the experience of having to do the heck of a lot of work to get the book published. So I, I do not believe so. Also, I finished it. I feel like I don't have anything else to say on the subject right now. Like, here is the story. It had a beginning and a middle and an end. Enjoy. Will there be a musical? Will there be an animated version? There's basically zero chance of either of those two things, but it's good to have dreams, commenter. So, you know, I don't want to crush your dreams, but probably no. Will there be cheese in the novel? Yes, but it's 81,000 words long and cheese gets mentioned four times, maybe. It is a cheesy book, but not in that way. What are Caroline and Rosamond's favourite cheeses? Caroline's is probably brie with grapes and crackers because she's feeling fancy. Rosamond, for self-protection, basically has developed a taste for lavender cheese. It's it's a thing, you, you'll see it in the book, it's fine. Which cheese goes best with the book? Something comforting and delicious, but I wouldn't dream of choosing for you. Which is your favourite fantasy horse? A winged horse or a unicorn? Winged horse. Do you remember the magician's nephew? Fledge? Winged horse. I mean, unicorns are cool, but flying. Are you in the book? No, that was just for the cover reveal because it was funny. I am not in the book. Will you play Caroline and Rosamond in the live action adaptation? I already did? Although that's not strictly accurate either because the, the videos are the source material. The novel is the adaptation. I mean, I genuinely never intended to write a book, but here we are. Are there any other stories you've been inspired by for dialogue between the author slash narrator and the characters? It's basically early 2000s fanfic, uh, where in the author's notes before or after the chapters, and sometimes even in little asides during the chapters, the author would argue with the characters. That's basically where this comes from. If you had to fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses, which would you choose? Definitely the horse-sized duck, because if you manage to kill it, then there's large amounts of duck meat available, and, you know, my husband quite likes duck. Also, I like horses and would feel bad about killing a hundred of them, even if they're tiny. Did Caroline publish the book before she read the embarrassing fanfic? That's not in the book, that's only for the shorts. But if you want to kind of tie it in, we can say that Caroline, after polishing the manuscript up a bit, put some snippets on her blog or something, and then some people wrote some fanfiction. Because of course they did. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Hopefully enough to keep his little woodchuck house warm in the winter. It's going to be cold. Thank you for your questions. Some of them I got unexpectedly detailed on in kind of a not really relevant way, but here we are. I hope you enjoy the Fantasy Heroine series reruns. They are starting on the 1st of December. Also, ebook pre orders in places other than Amazon should be up very soon. I'll let you know. Thank you for listening to this ramble all the way to the end. If you have any more questions, you can always leave those in the comments. We might do this again. And uh, I hope you have a great day.